What is up, Max and I'll this video, and today we are talking about Mr. Blightside. This is my Blightcaller Stabomancer gun build. Uh, we are very much focused on doing as much status effect damage as we can, and we're taking advantage of some of the crazy new shenanigans that the Blightcaller can do that I'll be breaking down in its entirety today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let's get right into it. Before we get into all the gear, this video is sponsored by me. Uh, I recently launched shopmoxie.com, which is... The Damage Nation's new merch site, it's got, we've got official Damage Nation hoodies, an 8-bit Damage Nation t-shirt, and a long sleeve. Uh, they come in a bunch of different sizes and a bunch of uh, different color options, so if you're interested in picking up some merch, uh, shopmoxie.com. Alright, let's get into this gear. So the way that this build works is we're going to be building around status effect chance and status effect damage, and we're going to want to use weapons that are very good at applying status effects. Now, basically any weapon you can use on this build. However, the one that I think is just genuinely the best weapon for like mobbing, bossing, any situation because it's so versatile is the White Rider SMG. Now, this is one of the strongest SMGs in the game and it fits perfectly with the Blight Collar class. If you get this, uh, you can farm it from Wastard. Look for the consume two ammo per shot. The reason for this is because it'll actually shoot like two kind of beams, double beams um, per trigger pull, which will increase your DPS, even though it doesn't actually say that on the card, uh, you're really gonna want the consume two ammo per shot for higher DPS. Um, other weapons that work really well on this build, the crossblade fits perfectly. Uh, I've got one that's frost and lightning damage, which is amazing because we're going to be applying the soaked effect on enemies, which is gonna give me 50% more damage with both of these dots that are applying to enemies with big dot chance and big dot damage. Um, Literally anything else. The gluttony is a really fun weapon. Uh, you can toss this out. The tornadoes do gun damage, meaning they can spawn our geist in the shell, which is a lot of fun to do. Uh, the new vengeance uh, AR is really good with this build. The blue cake. Um, sword explosions are some of the strongest damage guns in the game, and they also have really high dots. Uh, the wizard's pipe is a fun weapon. Basically anything with a dot. Um, but the white rider, the crossblade, uh, the gluttony and actually for bossing the cannonballer now the reason we're using the cannonballer for bossing is because it has one of the highest status effect damages in the entire game with relatively good chance to apply it um, in the boss kills that you saw me doing I shoot this thing it procs a dot and all of the dot damage that's going to happen there is going to build up the damage of one our swarm companion which will spawn and do a ton of damage and then uh, for bossing i use the plague storm skill which takes a percentage of the damage that you're dealing and reapplies it as elemental bolts i've seen these bolts hitting easily over 20 million damage they will one shot bosses in of themselves it's pretty crazy uh on this setup it's like one of the strongest action skills i do not use this action skill for bossing uh this is actually a use any action skill build uh for mobbing i mainly use the bog totems or from the shadows and then for bossing i'll put on plague storm uh this build is very versatile then for the rest of the gear um i've got a twin soul on uh sometimes for bossing i'll try to do a melee swing where I can proc Caustic, which is going to give me more status effect chance and damage. Uh, and I've got Echo on here because we're doing so much damage. If I hit that melee swing, that melee swing can do a ton of damage. And if the Storm doesn't kill things, then the Storm, the Plague Storm, will get that Echo damage built into it. It's, it's just disgusting. Uh, nothing will last more than a few seconds against this build. For our shield, I'm using the Body Rune, which will give me extra fire damage, which has another chance to proc more status effects. We're going to want to proc as many status effects as we possibly can. The rings that I've gotten, um, these are the new status effect rings that drop 
from the new mirror. Uh, it actually took me zero time. Uh, I had spent about 500 crystals with only, I was using the farm that I would like set up in my like how to best farm DLC gear video. So if you haven't checked that out, I'll leave that in the description. But it took me about five minutes to get both of these status effect rings. I think I got fairly lucky. Uh, but these were the new status effect rings. They're nuts. Uh, and I don't have poison damage rolled on them. That's kind of what I need to go farm for, but um, yes. Further, for my class mod, I actually like don't have like the correct class mod on, uh, which is crazy to me because I could be doing so much more damage. Um, but the most important thing is that I've got points into Contagion um, and we're using the Miasmic Mail. Miasmic Mail is going to give us a bunch of status effect damage, which is super nice, and status effect chance, which is also really, really important to have because uh, we want to be making sure that we're proccing those status effects as fast as possible. Now, the ideal class mod is this kind of type thing where it's actually Stabomancer, primary, blight caller, secondary, which can roll into contagion and, and exploit their weakness uh, and all the status effect skills. This is the best kind of class mod. I have yet to get these perks on a miasmic male. So I'd be looking for this class mod, but this is a deathless. I'm looking for this with a miasmic male. Haven't got one yet, but that is going to be the god roll that I'm going to be farming for uh, because that is that would be disgusting. It would be doing even more damage, uh, especially with extra blight collar power to increase the damage of our storms. Um, really, really nice and our passive. For my amulet, I've got a the urge on with poison damage, blight collar power, and status effect damage. This is pretty much perfect. Uh, I don't think the urge is super necessary. It's really nice to have, and there's actually some tricks that I can show you guys how to get your um, action skill back really quick with using it. But you could use a protagonizer here. You could use a skeep if you wanted. Uh, the protagonizer, for example, will increase your ability damage, which will increase the damage of your storms. I haven't gotten this good of a roll on a protagonizer yet, but I think that could be really interesting. And then for my spell, I'm using a buffmeister. Most important thing with the buffmeister is to get Pew Kachow on it. Uh, Pew is going to increase your fire rate, more fire rate, more chance at proccing status effects, and Kachow is going to give us a ton of ability damage and ability crit chance, uh, which we are doing a decent amount of ability damage. One with Plague Storm, two with Bog Totem, three with Geist in a Shell. Um, ability damage is just very nice to have. So Buffmeister I use for bossing. For mobbing, uh, there's a few options that you can rock, actually. You can use a Rain Bolt, which has got a like, pretty fairly low cooldown. Guarantees applies uh, dots on enemies. Rain Bolt's really nice to use. Uh, the Inflammation spell is really good with the Verge. Uh, it's not the best like kind of setup with this because I'm using the um, Soaked Effect. But for example... The urge gives you cooldown every time you cast a spell, and these all these casts of the inflammation count as spell casts. So you can just get your action skill back very quickly uh, if you're just looking to spam your action skill. An inflammation is really good, and then lastly, the wicked gossip is also a really fun spell to mess around with. Uh, there's nothing that you're really locked to in spell wise, um, but for bossing, definitely look for an ability damage buff meister for that like big plague storm nuke if you're looking to do that. So my skill tree is a little bit weird, and it's custom tailored to how I like to play. The Blight Caller is genuinely so versatile, um, so I'm going to explain how I set this up. Now, I didn't want to do melee with this build. I will be doing a melee Blight Caller, which will do melee status effect damage and will be sick, but that's not the point of this build. I really wanted to focus on guns. Um, so I'm going Potent Poisons here, more status effect damage and duration, exploit their weakness for more damage increases. Note this was just changed that you have to use multiple elements, and so getting a class mod with points into Contagion is really important. You get, if you're wearing a class mod with points into Contagion, you benefit from those points, even if you're not specced all the way down into that. So I'm getting plus three into Contagion, which gives my dots a chance to apply a random new status effect whenever I apply one. This is what's allowing me to do all of the elements. And even with only plus three into here on my class mod, I'm getting all the elements like very quickly. I notice all the buffs stacking up. So that is just fine. Originally, when I first made this build, when I was going to put it out the other day, I was specced all the way down to Contagion. We did a bunch of testing and it's better off to spend more points in the Blight Collar tree because for a gun build, there's some wasted, there's some not so great skills in the Stabomancer tree that you need to spend to get down to Contagion. I also put three points into Haste just because I like being fast. Uh, it's fun to be fast and I like being fast. So I put three points here. Uh, you could literally put these points anywhere though. Uh, but yeah, I like being speedy. So I put three points there. Uh, next up, Virulence, Status Effect Chance, and Duration. Super important. Geist in the Shell. I like using From the Shadows sometimes. 
uh, from the shadows inc gives all of your dots crits, like they will crit, uh, and Geist in the Shell procs like crazy. If you want to do some Geist in the Shell shenanigans, you could put on something like a times three sword explosion or a times 18 body rocker, and you will, in from the shadows, you'll proc a ton of Geist in the Shell, which can do some crazy damage, especially when you're specking into a, as much ability damage as we have. Uh, active Decay, poison damage, no brainer. Flawless Edge, more damage when our shield is full. Um, this is a great skill. Uh, I like using the body rune for mobbing, but I will put on a cursed wit for bossing just because of the 100% increased damage, um, which is part of the reason why I'm not specced into amped up. We'll get there in a second. Uh, Wraith mail. When we kill an enemy, we get shields back. Really nice for survivability. Bog down. This is kind of a must have. Uh, even though it decreases our fire damage, we're going to get more damage with lightning and frost. Worst curse. Kind of must have. It's going to give us a ton more ability damage. We don't really care for the spell damage. Uh, the ability damage is what we're here for. Uh, the reason I'm not spec'd into Amped Up and uh, the reason I'm not spec'd into Restore the Veil is because I want to be able to control when my shield is full and when my shield is depleted. That's very important to me. Uh, I really like using the Curse Wit for the 100% increased damage and... If I'm randomly proccing a lightning status effect and my shield goes up, then I lose that 100% damage. Um, yes, it's nice to have Flawless Edge, but Curse Wit is still better. Um, so that's why I didn't spec into Amped Up or Restore the Veil, because I want, I'd like to be able to control when my shield is full or not. Uh, next up, Burnt Offering. More gun damage. Spell cooldown rate. Uh, both really, really nice to have here. Toxicity. More critical hit damage and action skill cooldown rate. We don't care for the companion stuff. And then Spirit Swarm. The way that we're spec'd out to this build is to just do as much status effect damage as possible and boost up our ability damage. Our status effects will tear through things, and the Spirit Swarm Companion is probably your highest damage dealing part of this build. Uh, this will take on the damage of your status effect, and this thing will go around hitting enemies for millions of status effect damage. Um, it's just so good. The AI for it is good. The activation, it's going to be always up. It's always going to be always active. It's really fast. Uh, this is the best skill for Blight Collar, in my opinion. I absolutely love it. And it makes status effect builds so, so good. And lastly, for our hero points and class background, there are new class backgrounds, so I'll, I'll be covering that in a second. I'm expecting to crit damage, uh, status effect damage, and skill cooldown are what I prioritized. Um, status effect damage is the most important. I went crit damage just because uh, I like going into From the Shadows sometimes and... I don't need more crit chance when I'm in from the shadows and skill cooldown. Our skills are really, really good here. Uh, if you wanted to move these points from crit damage into skill cooldown, you absolutely could do that. Uh, and for our like twist of fate background, I would strongly recommend either the rogue alchemist background or the new sea urchin background. Um, I think rogue alchemist will output a little bit more damage at the very, very end game, but it's going to be slightly insignificant. Uh, the sea urchin, if you're going to go do through a playthrough up until chaos 50, I think will be slightly better. Uh, mainly the, the trade-off is that the uh, sea urchin will start you with uh, not a big boost to status effect damage versus rogue alchemist will. All right, now let's do a little boss kill demonstration. I'm going to use the white rider just because I did a lot of boss kill showing with the... Um with the rocket launcher, which some of you all might not, not, not have. I feel like the white rider is pretty easy to get. Uh, let's see if he can break my shields, maybe. Maybe break my shield. Okay, well. Like, you, you, you see what I mean? Like, nothing went right there. <laughs> like, literally, nothing went right there. My shield never broke. I never got my 100% damage. I was just waiting to start doing my damage. And, like, Parasite literally died while I was waiting. Uh, just a little bit of status effect damage, and the storm will just tread bosses. Uh, the build's crazy. Um, I hope you guys enjoy it. I will have the save file in the Discord. Genuinely, like, I think this class is so well designed. It's really, like, there's so many build possibilities, and you can kind of custom tailor uh, whatever you want with this class and to go into whatever skills, whatever playstyle. I will have a bunch more build videos for Blight Collar. Let me know what class you want to see next. Uh, if you guys have a preference for like what multi-class you'd like to see um i've got a few things messing around with but yeah guys that is it for the video i will catch you all in the next one and check out shopmoxie.com let's go peace guys <laughs> I was